Uh, hello everybody, um, sorry about the delay, we've had some technical issues but we've overcome them now. Um, my name's Liam Collins and I am uh, I'm a professional artist sculptor and I've been chosen to uh, be part of this Art Court Artist takeover, which is quite cool. Um, I hope you're all well and keeping safe and keeping it all together, because that's the most important thing. This isolation situation is... Uh, is quite taxing. Um, so as I said, my name is Liam Collins and I was born in Chelsea in London and I was born in the late 60s. I, I've had a pretty uh, sporadic education. But, um, but it sort of led to quite interesting things anyway. F free thought, open-mindedness. Uh, my uh, influences are the Renaissance, painters and abstract painters and sculptors. And uh, wonderful people like the Dada movement and Duchamp, these are my, some of my favourite artists, they're absolutely wonderful. Um, I, I've had a very uh, unusual life experience. My, my mum was, was a bit of a hippie actress in the 60s and uh, that kind of guaranteed a very early introduction to an abstract, abstract existence where dreaming and art were my own form of escapism. And, uh, you know, she dragged us out of schools, across hitchhiking across Europe, uh, where we end up in places like Greece, living in the ancient caves and tombs of Matala on Crete. But the, the energy of these experiences were quite profound for a 12-year-old child. And, uh, I mean, there are too many memories of, of what went on, but um, hopefully I'll complete the book one day. Uh, I just need to hide away some time to finish it. And hopefully, hopefully not a uh, pandemic situation, but a normal one. Um, yeah, so um, this is the artist takeover, and I just wanted to uh, briefly talk about some of the uh, the art that I've been creating during this time. And uh, yeah, I, I I found myself as I normally do, wandering around the house, looking in the garden, trying to find wonderful materials that I could work with. And one of the latest things I found, which uh, kept me quite busy, was an old paintbrush that was wedged in a jar, and that's behind me here. I'll just take it off the wall. If you can see it in there. It was an old paintbrush that was wedged in to a jar and the, the little brushes have been bent to the side. And I thought, oh, that's really weird. There must be something quite wonderfully artistic in that. Although at that time I wasn't quite sure, but um, but soon the, uh, the, the sort of artistic juices started flowing and it, it looked to me like it was uh, the hand of Fatima. So I thought, oh God, that's quite interesting. Maybe I can do something with that. And that's when I suddenly realized, oh wow, look at this. This could be the art of Fatima. I could actually put an eye on this because it really does look like the hand of Fatima. So I thought that's quite relative with uh, isolation and warding off evil spirits. So, yeah, I just set about doing what I normally do, and that is um, to beautify things and make them as pretty as possible. Uh, so the other thing that I work with is um, my creative influences come from my subconscious mind. Uh, I let my subconscious mind throw forward ideas, and then I try to put them together and make something with them. Like, for example, OXO cubes. I just had quite a few OXO cubes lying around one day. I think it was after a Sunday meal. And uh, they're quite pretty and shiny and colourful. And I just thought, well, what can I be doing with those? My mind wandered off, as it usually does. And I thought, hey, look at that. I could actually make that into a little Rubik cube. So I thought, how would I do that? Anyway, it was quite simple in itself because it was just a matter of uh, super glue and creating that shape. But it was just really nice to take an everyday object and... Um, use other kind of materials to turn it into something interesting. These actually became part of a, a gallery exhibition up north in, um, in a gallery, uh, the Coppola Gallery, as part of their Christmas exhibition. Uh, and these were contemporary Christmas baubles and they hung off the tree. So, um, let's see what else I was going to talk about. Um, yeah, so during this takeover, uh, I wanted to talk to you about um, what I do and, and how my style of art has helped me through this unusual uh, and trying time of quarantine. 
you know, I feel somewhat lucky though. Uh, as an artist, I, I have the advantage of being able to express myself creatively through lockdown. Uh, you know, as this is what we artists do, um, you know, to hide away and create beautiful art in our own space and time. And, and weirdly, this isolation has brought up some very unique art uh, that I normally wouldn't have thought about, like, um, for example, painting the whole front of my house with an artist's paintbrush. Now, why would anyone want to do that, you know, in their right mind? Well, we're not in our right minds at the moment. So figuring out new artistic things to do can help the, uh, the, help with the stress relief of, uh, of the isolation. But I thought that, that, actually, um, that actually really helped me in, in a very zen-like way because I just re very much got into the, the singular strokes of using the brush as, as an action of the movement and what that did was it just it just made me feel really relaxed and I wasn't actually doing anything artistic in particular but in itself that was quite an, an interesting artistic art form just the act of working with the movement of the brush with the paint the up and down and just vibing with that act, that movement was just really beneficial one thing I did find that was a bit annoying though was so many people kept coming by trying to talk to me on their way to the shops and I just thought, ah, you're not social distancing, this isn't helping. Anyway, I had set up a little barricade out the front there so people didn't get too close to me. But um, yeah, it was uh, a wonderful thing and um, I felt like, I felt this is actually a, a very nice way of relaxing and then I'd set myself this sort of two hourly time parts to work and then an hour break and it's lasted about eight weeks so um, I was really pleased about that. So the other thing I, I like to work with is I mentioned earlier about throwing up ideas from my subconscious mind and uh, one that I've been working on recently is called Curator's Dream. and. I've got hundreds of bits of paper lying around everywhere because I, I tend to write everything down. And Curator's Dream is like a template for a mechanical device which I eventually want to make one day. Where it's, it's sort of like a, a portal to another dimension. It's, um, it's an art sculpture that hangs on a wall with a ticking pendulum which is, it emulates the standing still of time where Everything happens in the moment. There is no future, there is no past, because those things are illusions. But the present moment is where everything happens. And, and that's where everything happens in your subconscious mind, is in the present moment, on a quantum level. And this is where I believe this thing, which I call m manifestationism, with the power of your mind, you can actually make certain things come into reality. It's like the power of self-belief, or believing in yourself so much that you can make things happen. But I've kind of tuned it to using it for creating art ideas. So, like, for example, the OXO cube. I just saw that there, and then I saw uh, a Rubik cube over there, and I thought, well, maybe I could make, you know, it just sort of made me join those two ideas together. So I don't even have to think about these kind of things anymore. They just literally pop into my forward conscious mind. So I've been relying on that completely now to make my art. And... In times of isolation, it's perfect because I'm not just sitting around thinking, oh, what am I going to do next? This is just a nightmare and getting really bored. And, you know, I, I don't really watch much TV anyway, so that doesn't matter. But I could just sit back and say, right, come on, subconscious mind, go to work, do your thing. And, uh, for example, behind me, I have a, a Spanish guitar, which I covered. And one day I looked at that across the room and I thought, well... You know, it's broken. I can't actually use it anymore. What can I do with it? So I thought, hmm, ah, hang on. And I looked across the other side of the room and there was a set of party wings that had been left over from a party one day. And I thought, well, maybe I could do something with that. And I thought, OK, so we've got these party wings. What are they? What could they be? And I thought, well, insects. Yeah, OK, zicadas. They make strange kinds of music. And so my mind started wandering and all this sort of zicada stuff. And then I thought, well, and the guitar, why have you thrown those ideas forward? What am I supposed to be doing with these things? And so I thought, okay, I'm going to... Uh, so I'm telling a quick, quick read now. 
I love the cupola. Well done. <laughs> do you do you think then the more you are creative, the easier it gets? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think um, it's it's like the main thing in my life. All I ever do is just think creatively constantly. It's just it's like I need to be fed. I can't stop doing it. It's like that's my existence. That's my purpose in life. That's what I'm here for. Yes, I have my regular and everyday job, but I tend not to think about that uh, very much unless you know, unless it's uh, an important job that I have to, you know, concentrate on to earn money, like the renovation work, but I tend to not really get too uh, kind of creatively and emotionally involved. But I'm just very good at that anyway, because I'm quite artistic. But um, I'm going to just quickly grab the guitar from behind me. This is my uh, Zicada guitar. And it's covered in marble. And, and other really weird objects, which I found on the beach, um, beautiful bits of driftwood. I've even got some original Roman coins in here, you know, things that I found. So when you make these things, you cover them in the marble and before they set, you embed them with these beautiful jewels and bits of silver and opals. I, I just adorn them with all sorts of beautiful little things. Anyway, the wings are not actually on this at the moment because uh, they were under reconstruction because they got damaged recently. So the wings, would have been ordinarily on the side of the guitar so it looked like a guitar that is an insect and it was it was called the zicada guitar so this zicada guitar was designed as a sound piece uh, which operated with a bluetooth speaker in the bottom of the uh, guitar and then you access it through your phone so anyway it's interactive anyone could use it and that was um, at the espacio gallery recently in shoreditch which went down really well. And it's also hung at the Cotswolds Sculpture Park in a tree, which was also fantastic. I still got more plans for this though. Let's see, other questions. Anthony Boutier is waiting, wave. Hi Anthony, I hope you're doing well. Um, okay, so the other thing that I, I got involved with uh, was jewelry box making. This is actually something which I love doing. And it's something like a lot of people can get involved with too, especially with the marble. So how you cover these boxes is you mix latex glue with reconstituted marble dust, which in essence uh, is grout. So what you do is you mix the PVA glue with the grout and it becomes like an icing. And then you cover it over the box with a spatula. And before it dries, you then start to embed all your little coins in and if you haven't got any coins what you may have a lot of at this moment in time and recently are wine bottle tops because I think there's been a lot of drinking going on lately <laughs> so anyway what you do is you flatten out these wine bottle tops with a little rolling pin See, that's quite nice and flat and then you bend it around the edge of the box like that and you embed it into the marble you see and then when you paint it it looks exactly like an ancient coin and you can even cover books with the marble it's really good you see so they all end up looking like that's my own scripture by the way I've invented my own style of writing. But medieval books, yes, they kind of look a little bit film proppy, but the more time you spend on them, the more beautiful they can actually look. This one here actually has uh, amber, real amber in it. That was one of my favorite boxes. It came out really well. Absolutely beautiful, fur lined. But real amber and all my ancient scripture on it and I have another another one of my boxes here this is called Renaissance box and it has a glass front on it so it has all the images of sort of Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci imagery which is collage and I have lots of little legends in there this is really heavy to hold up actually because it's marble it's like a stone actually weighs a ton um, but again this the front of this one has lots of 
old coins embedded in it. There's a big Chinese coin in there. That's a Roman coin in the corner. And if I open the lid, it looks very cracked. I mean, that's all made on purpose. But yeah, so, I mean, these are, these are kind of lovely boxes that you can find these in your house. Even an old shoe box will work, but it's very simple. All you do is you mix up the PVA and it's like icing a cake. Um, thanks, Jess. <laughs> you said incredible detail. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, and then so you ice the cake and then you have all your pre-cut materials ready to uh, stick in afterwards. So anyway, um, another weird idea I came up with today was, um, I like to play on words, probably an age thing, but uh, a lot of my work revolves around plays on words like Cicada Guitar, um, Curator's Dream. But I came up with this other one recently from another one of my sketches. I haven't quite worked it out yet, but it's going to be um, partly to do with the name Mandela's Maze or Mandela's Mada M Mandala. Um, and it's, a, it's an idea based on the uh, Mandela effect. Uh, this is um, a weird phenomenon that arose, I think it was in the 80s or 90s, where, where collectively the whole world thought that uh, Nelson Mandela had died. <laughs> and, and he actually hadn't. He was alive and well. But there was this weird phenomenon where collectively across the world information got out and everyone started believing that Man Nelson Mandela had died. Uh, and there was a lady in, I think it was the, the 2000s or maybe late 90s, that she realised this, this, uh, this phenomenon and um, she decided to research it. And I think she wrote a book about it. But she pointed out quite rightly that there's this collective universal uh, effect that can have, have on a... a you know, the world globally about certain ideas about people or something that something's happened, that someone has died and they actually haven't, but yet we all end up believing it. And it's called now the uh, Mandela effect. But I would love to make a piece about that because uh, I think that's really quite cool. It's an interesting subject and, uh, and I'm really interested in those kind of subjects. Let me just show you uh, a couple of other more pieces of my art. And they're great things that you can do in isolation because, you know, it is like making a cake. But instead of eating these, you will end up with these forever. Or you can give them as uh, presents to friends. Okay, so... This piece here... This is called 10 to 2. So if you can see that... And like a lot of my work, it was the subconscious mind influence. And I wanted to be able to, you know, very tongue in cheek, literally, be able to put a mouth, a smiley face on a painting with the words, please buy me in it, and it not mean that. Uh, so this piece is about subliminal advertising. But if you go to uh, the watch shops and all the clock shops, that every single watch shop and clock shops shops of uh, watches that they sell, the hands are always on 10 to 2, creating a little smile. And that idea is uh, psychologically to influence you without you realising to please buy me. It's a little thing that's uh, got a smile on its face and it's calling to you without you realising. And I know that stuff's real. And the advertising people know that's real. And they use that to their advantage. But that was a really old form of subliminal advertising, and they knew about it then, you know, hundreds of, hundreds of years ago. So, um, yeah, another subconscious mind thought, and another, another interesting uh, piece, in my view, that has come from it. So, yeah, um, that's about it, really. I, I hope you're all uh, looking after yourselves and not going too crazy. I think creativity is probably you know, the number one way out of this uh, lockdown and, and to stay positive. I think, you know, in, if you think in any other way, I, I don't think you'll make it through. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in the fact that we can all get through this and we will remain strong and push forward and we'll come out the other side. It won't be, it won't be long. And uh, yes, things will change forever because of it, but... 
you know, one thing I have noticed is that people have more and more come together. People have opened up more. Um, I mean, yes, it has brought out the, the worst and the best in us, but I think it has, for the majority it's brought out the best in people. You know, there's a lot more people communicating, and that's, uh, that's a really wonderful thing. Um, yeah, so uh, look, thanks for listening to my uh, talk. I hope I've been able to share some interesting ideas with you. And, uh, and look after yourselves and take care. And, and thanks very much to Artcore for giving me the opportunity for this talk as well. And good luck to everyone watching. Take care.